So, uh, team keep it clean. What's going on? Well, y'all already know what's going on. Uh, the Ravens, John Harbaugh put out a statement uh, letting the world know that the Ravens have fired Wink Martin. Well, let me not use that word because Harbaugh doesn't use that word, so I can't use that word. Harbaugh and Wink, they came to a mutual agreement. They both decided that after these couple of years, there's been some successful seasons and whatnot, but they decided to both go their separate ways. Hashtag hood hardball, or we see you, big dog. Um, and it was a shocker to me. I was very, very surprised. Didn't see it coming at all. Did not see that happening. Um, I really thought that everybody was going to be given the pass. But apparently not. And since we're not giving out passes, that can't be the last move that the Ravens make. It cannot, it should not be, and hopefully it will not be. I really thought going into this offseason, that started a lot earlier than we would have wished, but it's okay. Going into this offseason, we figured that everybody was going to be given an injury pass. Like, all those guys hurt. All right, yeah, even though we don't want the pass to be given, but okay, they give the pass. All right, let's roll with it. All right. But Ravens said, nope. They said, nope. And see, this, this, is, this move is for all those Ravens fans that did not want them in the playoffs. Not because they felt they couldn't compete, which I'm, I know a lot of people did feel, but because they felt like if the Ravens were to make the playoffs with this roster, with this team, with this coaching staff, then they felt like there would be no change. And really, when you think about it, that was a good point, because it's not even just a hindsight 2020 thing. Because when people said that, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I could understand. I still wanted them to make the playoffs. But looking back at it, if they're going to be making some serious changes, <laughs> I ain't too mad right now. I'm really not. But again, it cannot stop with Wink. It can't. That cannot be the end all be. It's not like, all right, Wink, he's fired. <laughs> Problem solved. All right, we're good to go. No, you're not. Now, something crazy that I've been hearing, I, I, I saw that, uh, I forgot who it was. They said that Vic Fangio was a candidate for defensive coordinator. I'm like, what? You think he's coming here? Going to work under Harbaugh? <laughs> then I saw some people suggesting, oh, maybe Rex Ryan should come back in. You think he want to work under Harbaugh? <laughs> well, maybe he does because his brother's there too, but... Then, of course, there was Cullen, who was the defensive coordinator for the Jaguars. There's Anthony Weaver, who's the defensive line coach for the Ravens. There's, um, uh, I want to say Hewitt. I know I'm saying his last name wrong, but he's the current linebacker coach. So Ravens got some options. They could go outside or they could promote from within. I think they'll end up promoting from within, but we'll see. Because this could be, I wonder if this is an EDC move. It was a Harbaugh move. And the reason I ask that question is because if it was a Harbaugh move, well, it would still be uh, him getting a call from either Bashadi or EDC saying, hey, it's time, man. So, something has got to give. And if you don't want it to be you, then you better make some tough decisions and fast. And... The Harbaugh and them, they, they put out this statement that prettied, prettied it up. It, it softened the blow. It sugarcoated it so wonderfully. But Wink was fired. Now, something that's been very strange to me um, that I just I don't understand is how people have been saying they think that uh, the Ravens fire Wink now because he may have a head coaching opportunity. Now, I just I don't understand that because he's a defensive coordinator for the Ravens. And <laughs> unless we don't forgot, he ain't got nothing on his schedule right now. Ravens ain't got to prepare for nobody because they're not in the playoffs. So his schedule is literally wide open. So why would him being a defensive coordinator for the Ravens? Why would him still being on a team prevent him from taking a head coaching job if offered the opportunity? I so saw when people said that, I just, I, I didn't understand. But if, if y'all have some other way that y'all are thinking about that, 
please explain it in the comments because I, I would really love to see it because I just I, ju I just don't get that. I don't understand that. Because, again, it was literally there would literally be nothing holding him back now on the flip side. Only way I could see that would be if the Ravens could be using a possible um, somebody possibly being interested in Wink to be a head coach. They could be using that as sort of leverage for them to help escort him out. And they'd be like, right, hey, Wink, hey, you, you, you go be a head coach somewhere, big dog. Hey, we hope you go out there and kill it as a head coach. Go do your thing. We know you can do it. That would be the only reason. But other than that, it just it doesn't make sense to me. But again, Wink ain't getting a pass. G don't deserve a pass either. And somebody else who doesn't deserve a pass is Hobbs. Now, we know when it comes to the head coach and the offensive and the defensive coordinator, it's the head coach that has the most leeway. He has the sort of longish leash, so to speak. Um, and he has the, the best job security out of the three. I don't even really like to use that word because he got one year left on his deal. One year left. So this, this could be it. But I'm sure, as we've said before, even before this whole firing, we said that we, we are sure that the Ravens front office had the conversation with John Harbaugh. Like, look, man, this is it. This is it. We ain't putting up with none of the foolishness. We ain't going to tolerate none of the nonsense. This is it. It's all on you, John. It's all on you. So we'll see. Now, another thing that I've been seeing people say is that one of the reasons that the Ravens may not have fired Greg Roman yet, at least as of this recording, um, but they haven't fired Greg Roman yet is because they may have their eye on somebody who's currently in the playoffs. Now, that wouldn't make sense to me either. Because if you got your eye on somebody who's in the playoffs, wouldn't you want to get a head start on interviewing that candidate on possibly bringing that candidate on or, or not bringing them on because they'd be in the playoffs but getting the process rolling I think that they would it would only make sense right so I just I thought that that was just weird now um a lot of people are afraid of change a lot of people are scared of change but change is one of the things that you do the most in life uh, and it's part of a growth process you, you cannot literally do the same thing every single day, the same way every single day and expect to grow. Even like, even imagine, just imagine when you were a baby. Take it back to when you were a baby. Are you still walking around in diapers right now? Well, if, if you may be having a little rough situation over the past couple of days, you might have had something bad to drink. Something bad. But besides that, on a, normal, on a normal occasion, are you walking around in diapers? No. You did that when you were a baby. You did that when you were a small child, but you grew. You changed the way you operate. You got potty trained. That's, a growth, that's part of the growth process. So it's the same way in adulthood. It's the same way in the NFL. Change is part of growth. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get those same results, and you're not going to grow. Now, with Wink... Change started, but this can't be the end of change. A lot of people fear. Or oh, you know what? I, I think I think I almost think some people put this like illusion in their head that they fear if Greg Roman was to leave. They're scared if Greg Roman was to leave. Oh man, what's gonna happen? You really want Lamar Jackson to have to get another offensive coordinator? Oh man, do you you don't want a Joe Flacco him, do you? Lamar Jackson, his first offensive coordinator was Marty Morningwick. And he got that offensive core. Well, he was the offensive coordinator going into the 2018 season. But Lamar came in. They changed up a lot of the offense for him to suit him. And the Ravens did their thing. Then he was... The, oh, no, no. They, he declined that job offer. He declined the job offer. And he went his separate way from the Ravens. Remember, I can't say the word fire because y'all know. But anyway, um, so then he, ha he had to change offensive coordinators. Can you believe that? 
Lamar Jackson had to change offensive coordinators and, he, and from his rookie to his sophomore season. Oh, my goodness. And what happened? How bad did Lamar Jackson do? Oh, well, he just won a little MVP, a little unanimous MVP. Oh, man. Wow. So this fear that people almost instill in themselves, if the Ravens were to move off from Greg Roman, you should not be scared of that at all. You should be excited. Now, will it happen? I think it should. And again, Harbaugh need to put up, be put on notice as well. He doesn't need to be fired. He don't need to be fired. But again, philosophy change. Remember, philosophy change. And you know what? While, while we're speaking about philosophy, let's see this, this tweet that got put out about one of the reasons why this move came about. Came from Aaron Wilson, who used to cover the Ravens back in the day. Y'all remember Aaron Wilson. Anyway, he said, philosophical differences led to Ravens parting ways with defensive coordinator Wink Martindale, per league sources. On here, we've been talking about how the Ravens need a philosophy change. <laughs> Somebody over at Owings Mills is getting it. They're getting it. They understand. They see the vision. They see what we see. Somebody over there at Owens Mills, we, we in tune, my friend, and I appreciate you. It's, it's a slow process. It's been a slow process, and you can speed it up. You got the power to speed it up. You just got to make it happen. Just got to make it happen. Will you? We'll keep being patient and see. But, again, this, this, this cannot be the end of change for the Ravens. It should not be. And hopefully it will not be. Now, Wink, we know Wink is going to land on his feet. No problem. No issues that we, we know he will. He will be just fine. For sure. Um, so shout out to Wink. And shout out to him again being a people's coach. A cool coach. Very, um, what's the word to describe it? A very confident coach. Very confident. His confidence was through the roof. Um, sometimes it did come back to bite him though Obviously the whole sack's being overrated But then you think about Even this year um, Oh man that dude Joe Burrow He doesn't have a gold jacket He don't have no gold jacket Like what Joe Burrow said oh really <laughs> I'm gonna make you think that I got a gold jacket 500 Burrow Ooh. And, and what made it worse He had already lit the Ravens up The first time and, and Wink hadn't made any crazy comments back then. So Joe Burrow already lit us up back then. So then with less corners, with less defensive guys, with more guys injured, he made those comments. Oh, when he made those comments, I was like, ooh, yikes, Wink. Ooh, that's <laughs> no, don't do that, my friend. Because those Bengals were healthy. We were not. And even when we were healthier, we still got got. Oh, yeah, I got the balls. I'm ready for it any time. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll see what's next We'll see what's next We gotta be patient, wait this thing out uh, And just let the process Play yourself out And hopefully Like more people will be uh, Very soon So Ravens can really get that philosophy change going I'm out